All right, guys, now we're now inside of Substance Painter. So let's hit this close button. I wanna press Control N on the keyboard to bring up this new project, or you could always just go to File, New, and then hit Select to locate your low poly. Grab that low poly here, hit Open. Uh, document resolution, we'll leave it at 2048 for now. Um, yeah, that's all we really need. Let's hit OK. Now we have our low poly. And you can rotate around by holding Alt, left mouse button, and moving your mouse to rotate. And you can zoom in by holding Alt and right clicking to zoom in and out. And to pan, it's just uh, Alt, middle mouse to pan. Okay, so inside of Substance Painter, now we can start adding the detail from the high poly. And really quickly, you can see there's no detail on here. And you can see that it's the low poly. If you hit this button here, you can see the wireframe. So we're going to project all that detail that we have uh, created inside of uh, Fusion 360 and um, ZBrush. So to go about doing that, go to Texture Settings. And then go scroll down to Base Mesh. I'm going to say Bake Mesh Maps. Now you're going to hit this icon right here to locate your high poly. You have the RPG high, open. Let's put the output size at 4K. Let's get 4K textures. And we can change this cage frontal distance to something like 32. So 32 for both. And right here where it says anti-aliasing, you want to change this to something like 8x8 eight eight or 4x4, four four, either one's fine. Match. Let's change match by a mesh name. And that's why we have the suffix of low and high. So it's going to bake those uh, to the targets. We don't have to worry about the back face suffix because we're not. that's not going to uh, dictate what we're going to be doing today. So once we have that done, we're just going to hit bake selected textures. And now we play the waiting game. So right now it's going to be baking the normal map, world map, ID map, which we do not have an ID map. We could have created that inside of ZBrush if we wanted to or Maya, but uh, we didn't. We don't really need it. Ambient inclusion, it's going to be creating that, curvature, position, and thickness. So right now you can easily see what the normal map did. It created those bulbs, those details that aren't in the low poly. And this is why knowing how to bake maps comes into play. So I'll just stop this and I'll continue once uh, this process is complete. All right, guys, we're done baking our textures uh, in our normal maps and things like that. Now you can quickly see that detail from the high poly projected onto the low poly model here. And it even did really good with this concave section here that we actually don't have on the low poly. And let's just see this area. We have those bolts now that aren't in the low poly. So if you turn sideways, you can see that it's, it's just an illusion. It's not really there. So that saved a bunch of polys so we don't have to create that. So let's go over to the Layers tab and let's start working on some textures for this. So to start off, I first used a smart material to uh, basically cover down at the base uh, level for the grenade. And I did polyfill to select certain areas that won't affect the entire model. So this is what gives it that uh, intricacy. And I do a, a base level first and then I start stacking upon the, the details. Just like we can do anything painting like in real life, you start off with one coat and then you do another coat, then another coat. And then you start adding surface imperfections like um, dust, dirt, grime, things like that. Because nothing in real life is perfect. Everything has wear and tear to it. And that's what makes the prop more believable and gives it more lifelike to it. So I'm adding stains right now and kind of trying to tell a story with the weapon, if that makes any sense. Anyone in game art knows that's what drives a prop and also lighting, but we'll touch on that here in a second. And one thing I do like about Substance Painter is the drag and drop process. Like I can easily drag a material and, it, uh, and use a, a smart mask to drive it as dirt. You see, I'm just dragging that dirt on there and then you can play with the modifiers and the levels to to drive how much dirt you want, how much you want to take away, and that's really powerful. And I don't think you can do that in any other texturing uh, application. And now what I'm doing is adding those rings that I almost forgot 
to uh, to work on. I said I was gonna go back in Fusion and export those out, and I actually forgot to do that. So uh, that's not a big deal because this is game ready model, so you don't have to have that that detail. So I just used the height map and I just uh, kind of created it here, so it looks like it's actually extruding off of the model. Now we can start rendering and seeing how this looks um, as a complete model, and this looks pretty good. I think a lot of the 50% of a good model is lighting and everyone pretty much knows that so whatever you can't do as far as text texturing you can kind of push forward in rendering and lighting so you can cycle through the environment maps the HDR maps you can try to get some good portfolio shots so I may cycle back through the HDR eyes and pick another one or just render a couple of these out in different lighting just to kind of see what they look like so this pretty much wraps up this uh, tutorial series so far. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. At this point, if you want to take this into uh, a certain game engine, whether it be Unity, uh, Unreal, or maybe you just want this for animation, for textures, for like Blender, you can export those out as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial series. And if you did, give it a thumbs up, like, and share. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.